The Chargers play the Raiders, and since football is back, I'm going to be previewing this game and try to figure out who is going to win, what are the best matchups, and let's just go ahead and get right into it. We're not going to waste any time here because I got a lot to talk about. This is going to all depend on the Chargers offense against the Raiders defense, okay? That is the biggest matchup right now, and the biggest thing I think is if the Raiders can harass Justin Herbert when he is throwing the ball. I think if the Raiders can do that, that's probably going to be their best opportunity to win this game. But let's start breaking this down, okay? The Chargers offense, it has been totally reimagined this year. And like any game footage that I could have shown you or like broken down film of from last year or even like this preseason with this, you know, new coaching staff and these players, um, it's not really relevant because last year it was a total new regime and like completely different receivers. While this preseason is not really relevant because a lot of the starters were held out and the play calling, it was extremely vanilla and they were clearly holding back because they didn't want to put some of their good stuff on tape. And one of those starters that did not play in the preseason for the Chargers, <laughs> bro, it was obviously Justin Herbert. He had that injury with his foot. He's fully healthy now, not even on the injury uh, report. And the injury report for the Chargers, really the only guy that might not be playing that is significant is DJ Chark. There are only two names on this injury report, bro. Look at this. It's like, that is a beautiful sight for me to see. But Justin Herbert being fully healthy, not even on the injury report is a huge deal because, I mean, listen. Both Chargers fans and Raiders fans know how big of a difference that he makes when he is on the field for the Chargers. Like, they beat the Raiders in their first game when Justin Herbert was playing, and then later on when Justin Herbert wasn't playing, they lost by like 50 freaking points. And that is such a huge difference that it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but that is, that's just the reality of it. But the main focal point of this Chargers offense, it's not really going to be the quarterback. It's actually going to be the run game because that is what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman want to do. This offense is going to be predicated on the run. Everything is going to go through that offensive line and the running game. So JK Dobbins, Gus Edwards, those are the primary backs for the Chargers. Both of these running backs, they are fully healthy, and they have been some of the most efficient running backs in the NFL. And J.K. Dobbins, man, he has the potential to be one of the best running backs in the entire league if he remains healthy for a full season. And if he does, I think that, you know, he could also win Comeback Player of the Year. He would le at least be in the conversation if he has a fully healthy year because that is how talented this guy is. Will he remain healthy or not? I don't know, but he is healthy for this game. So we're talking about him the way that he should be talked about, like a really great player. If the Raiders want to stop this rushing attack, I think they're going to have to rely on their new addition, Christian Wilkins, the defensive lineman that they just signed from Miami. He's going to have to fill gaps, take on double teams along that interior of the defensive line to free up the linebackers like Robert Spillane. And Robert Spillane, he was actually graded as the sixth best linebacker against the run last year by PFF. And look right below him. Luke Masterson was the seventh best in a lower sample size. I'm going to be honest with you guys, but he was mostly a special teams player for them. I actually singled him out in the first matchup last year as someone who surprised me because I, I did not even know who this guy was. And he flashed on tape against guys like Rashawn Slater in the run. But, you know, this Raiders run defense with Robert Spillane as one of the best run defending linebackers in the NFL, now being able to play behind a guy like Christian Wilkins one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL, like that is certainly going to be a challenge for the Chargers rushing attack. And it's all going to depend on the battle at the line of scrimmage on this side of the ball. Can the Chargers interior offensive line with Bradley Bozeman, Zion Johnson, and Trey Pipkins now at right guard, can they handle Christian Wilkins and John Jenkins while being able to climb to the second level and take on some of those linebackers like Robert Spillane and Divine Diablo? So while that's going to be crucial, it's also going to be crucial to keep an eye on the edges of the line in this game because Max Crosby is one of the best defensive players in the entire NFL and he wrecked shop both games that he played against the Chargers. And, you know, honestly, he wrecked shop against like basically everybody last year. I think it was probably the best defender in the NFL last year, to be honest with you. I'm totally unbiased. I'm a Chargers fan and I'm saying that. So that's how you know this guy's freaking good. He plays with his hair on fire. Can Rashawn Slater and Joe Alt protect Justin Herbert when he is passing the ball? That's going to be the main question. We're going to see a lot of play action. So in those cases, Justin Herbert, you know, can he just use his mobility to make pass rushers miss? But in the pocket, Max Crosby and Malcolm Kuntz, 
they're going to need to be kept away from him. I think if Justin Herbert, you know, in that play action out on the run, we saw last year he made Max Crosby miss. He made him look a little bit goofy. I'm going to be honest with you, but we're not talking about last year, right? We're talking about this year. I think the Chargers, they're going to be using a lot of those extra tight ends and even extra offensive linemen out there lined up as tight ends on the inline of scrimmage to help block Max Crosby specifically no matter where he's lined up, whether he's lined up on the left side against Rashawn or he's lined up on the right side against Joe Alt. And then the other side of the ball, wherever Max Crosby is not, they're going to have to deal one-on-one -on -one with Malcolm Kuntz. So Malcolm Kuntz is going to have a big opportunity here to wreck this game because you're not going to be able to double team both of those edges. When you have a guy like Christian Wilkins on the interior, you're going to need to give some resources to both of those guys, Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby. So like I said, Malcolm Kuntz, it's probably going to be one-on-one -on -one a lot, maybe against Joe Alt. They're going to probably challenge Joe Alt in his very first NFL game. And Patrick Graham is their defensive coordinator. And if the Raiders defense plays as well as they did towards the end of last year, then I think he could get some serious head coaching buzz for next year because they were that good. Like from week nine onwards, they were the best defense in points allowed, 10th in takeaways and third in sacks. And now you add Christian Wilkins when you already had a guy like Max Crosby and the things that he can dial up with those two guys, they might be even better this season. We're just going to have to wait to see it in action. Now let's talk about the other side of the ball, which is uh, a little bit more, I guess, boring, but it's still a pretty good matchup. Uh, Gardner Minshew is the starting quarterback, and that should tell you just about everything that you need to know. So peace. I'll see you in the next video. No, but like it, this offense, it's not going to be great. Okay. Gardner Minshew is the freaking starting quarterback. Devontae Adams, he's still a really good wide receiver, and he could, you know, create some matchup problems against, I think he's going to be lined up against Christian Fulton more than Asante Samuel Jr., but really either one of those guys, he could create issues. Uh, this offense doesn't really have any other great targets to throw to other than him. Like, I, I do like Jacoby Myers. He's a solid wide receiver, too. Trey Tucker, I think he showed some good stuff last year. He's kind of like a speedy wide receiver. But those two aren't really guys that are going to make your quarterback's life easier like Devontae will. And that's what you need when you have a quarterback that can't elevate the receivers. You know what I mean? It's got to be one way or the other. Your receivers elevate the quarterback or the quarterback elevates the receivers. Having a good running game will also make your quarterback's life easier. And with the loss of Josh Jacobs, the Raiders are going to have to rely on Zamir White to be the guy and Alexander Madison. They're both going to have to take on the bulk of those snaps at running back. Can they get to that same kind of production and that same kind of level that Josh Jacobs was at? It's remaining to be seen. And I think the X factor on this side of the ball is going to be Brock Bowers because we have not seen him in action yet at all. Uh, he's a rookie, obviously. Didn't really see him a ton in the preseason. He was blocking a lot more than I expected in the preseason. But he has also not been practicing this week. But Antonio Pierce, their head coach, said that he's going to be good to go for week one. And the play, the way that they plan to utilize Brock Bowers is going to be very similar to the way the Chiefs use Travis Kelsey. So that's certainly something to watch out for. He's going to be using a lot of different spots on this offense lined up. No matter where he is, he's going to be creating uh, issues for this Chargers defense because you need to have someone lined up out wide or lined up in the slot and the inline of scrimmage that can match that size and speed combo. He's also a pretty good route runner. Like I was watching this dude at Georgia. You guys know all the Chargers fans know how good Brock Bowers is. So I think Brock Bowers, he could really create some issues for the Chargers if he comes out in week one. He's healthy. The Raiders have a good plan to get him the ball and things like that. But the problem is you got to get him the ball. Can Gardner Minshew get him the ball consistently and effectively? That's the question. And then on the Chargers defense, bro, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Tuli Tui Pelotu, Bud Dupree. These guys are all healthy and ready to get their hands on the quarterback. Colton Miller, he's a good left tackle, but he can't protect Gardner Minshew all by himself. And those are four edge rushers that are pretty good above average in the NFL. So the Chargers, they're going to pose some serious matchup problems for that offensive line. You add in a bunch of different formations that they can use these guys with. DB blitzes, linebacker blitzes, simulated pressures, stunt moves. I don't think that Raiders offensive line is going to be able to handle it. I'm just going to say that straight up. And I definitely don't think Gardner Minshew is going to be comfortable in this game. So I would expect the Raiders to have some trouble on offense. So overall, I would expect this to be an old school run heavy defensive matchup that the Chargers ultimately win. It's going to be a fun matchup if you like edge rushers because we got some of the best in the NFL 
in this game. And if you did not see my video from yesterday, then you can click right here.